Here Jesus does a great thing. He'll, he'll take, he saves the guy and they want to get rid of Jesus. Amen? And when he was coming to the ship, he had been possessed with the devil, prayed that he might be with him. How be it Jesus suffered him not, but said to him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how what great things the Lord have done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. But I want you to notice in verses 13 to 17 here, something interesting. You see, darkness was all around that place. Right? The devil and the fallen angels possessed this man and, and they had total control of that territory, that whole area. Right? So darkness was all around. All of a sudden, Jesus comes on the scene and light hits that darkness, right? In John chapter 3, in verse number 19, this area was demon territory, and Jesus, by entering into it, claimed the territory, and, and, he, and, and he got victory over Satan in that territory. And that's why they wanted Jesus to leave the territory. Light entered, a man got saved, and the devil says, I don't like this, I don't like Jesus entering my territory, amen? So when darkness is all around you, and the Bible says that we who are believers, the light dwells on us. So everywhere we go into dark territory, battle. Mm -hmm. Satan doesn't like it when light hits darkness. He does not like it whatsoever. And so there's going to be a battle. And so what happened here? These two groups of angels, the fallen angels, and these two scriptures I gave you, they hold territory. You don't think they control cities? You don't think they control countries? Yes, they do. And wherever you see evil, and the worst of it, Satan and the fallen angels are all behind it. Why do you think there's so much trouble over in the Middle East? Why do you think there's so much trouble and all of those nations all oh and do you notice who's getting persecuted in all those nations? All born again believers. They're killing them by the thousands over there. It's just not being reported. You go, Pastor, how do you get that kind of news? You always listen to the missionaries. They will tell you the truth what's going on in that country. And right now in Africa, in Syria. And, and especially in the Muslim countries, born-again believers are being slaughtered by the thousands. Why? Light has hit dark territory. And Satan does not like it. You see, demon angels, they have authority. And they have authority to operate in the physical world. Paul illustrates this in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Turn over there. In Ephesians chapter 6. And notice verse number 12. The Bible says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities and powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness and high places. See the authority there? Angels have authority to work and operate in the physical world. We are part of this struggle when we come to Christ. Demons understand we are the Lord's army advancing in enemy territory, and the battle is totally spiritual, amen? It's spiritual battle. Look at Luke chapter 10. In Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 5, After these things, verse 1, The Lord appointed other uh, seventy also, and sent them two by two before his face into every city, and the place whither he himself would come. And therefore uh, said he unto them, The harvest truly 
is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into the harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs amongst what? Wolves, carrying you the purse, nor script, nor shoes, nor no man by the way. And into whatever house you enter first, say, Peace be unto this house. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall be turned to you. In Luke chapter uh, 10, verse 1 through 5, Jesus is going to send his disciples out into the world, into demon territory, into the enemy's camp. And he, he said, and what they're going to trust, he says, don't get, don't, don't get a job, just do your thing. They're going to trust on the hospitality of the Jewish people. Uh, if you study Jewish custom, when people come into town, they would look for people that would, that would help them, that would uh, give them a place to sleep and something to eat. That was hospitality. That was known among Jews. So Jesus said, find somebody that will accept you, go to that place, and, uh, and then preach the gospel and move on. If they don't accept you, well, just shake off and go and find somebody that will help you. So that's the sage that we're setting here. Now, notice verse 16 in that chapter. He says, He that heareth you heareth me, and he that despiseth you despises me, and he that despises me despiseth him that sent me. All right? And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan, what? As lightning falling down from heaven. So everywhere they went, zoom, 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 zoom. They saw those fallen angels coming down quickly every time. They went into a region and preached the gospel. So everywhere they went, you don't think those fallen angels were watching them? And behold, I give you power to trend the serpents and the scorpions over all the power. Nothing shall be means to hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Here's the point of these scriptures. Jesus sent out his disciples and told them not to take anything with them, right? Verses 1 through 5. Why? Why? That has nothing to do with the provision. No? No. So they could see the spiritual power. So they could see the spiritual power they had in Jesus' name as opposed to the flesh. Mm -hmm. Did you catch it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I'm going to send you out, but you're not going to go in the flesh. Mm -hmm. You're going to see as you go in my name, and you're going to see in my name you have spiritual powers to conquer these demons. Rejoice in that. Mm -hmm. Rejoice that. When you preach the gospel, people are getting saved. Rejoice in Jesus' name. Amen? Don't think it a big deal that you have power over demons. No, 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 no. He wanted them to see, listen, praise the Lord this morning, that we have power over our flesh to conquer every demon attack. Amen? Amen. Everyone. See, Jesus wants us to know that we do not need to depend on the physical. We need to trust Him and not rely on our abilities. Amen? Amen? Amen. And that's how you get victory over sin. Amen? It's not you or me doing it. It's letting Jesus do it all. Amen? You know why you got victory that day? Because you didn't go in your flesh. Glory. Amen? Amen? If we do anything in the flesh, what happens? We fail. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we fail. And Jesus said, listen, you need to understand something. It's, the demons are subject under my authority, not yours. So praise the Lord that we can, do not trust in our abilities. That's why he said, verses 16 through 19, listen, Satan does come down. His army falls out of heaven, but don't worry about it. Praise the Lord. You rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. Amen. So Satan's army is composed of fallen angels in two groups that go about and take over territory. Amen. 
That's how he wages war. He wages war in territory using human beings. And then we come in and mess up the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs>